Alright. Um Yeah. Uh, I can't remember who actually sent me this. This was a request from someone, but yeah, apologies. I can't remember who sent it to me. Um but Frank Sad Frank Zappa on Eve Angelicals. I had to look up what an evangelical is, and from what I can see it's Christian. Christians. But born again Christians, the ones that believe in born being born again as a I don't know. Based I know it's to do with the Christian religion. Um but yeah, let's see what Frank's views are. Let's go. I'm gonna try to see if you can see this. Mr. Zappa has published his own warning and guarantee to go on record albums. What is this about, Frank? Well, can I read it, or would you read it, or...? All right, it says, This album contains material which a truly free society would neither fear nor suspress. In some socially retarded areas, religious fanatics and ultra-conservative political organizations violate your First Amendment rights by attempting to censor rock and roll albums. We feel this is unconstitutional and un-American. As an alternative to these government-supported programs designed to keep you docile and ignorant, Barking Pumpkin is pleased to provide stimulating digital audio entertainment for those of you who have outgrown the ordinary. The language and concepts contained herein are guaranteed not to cause eternal torment in the place where the guy with the horns and the pointed stick conducts his business. This guarantee is as real as the threats of the video fundamentalists who use attacks on rock music in their attempt to transform America into a nation of check-mailing nincompoops in the name of Jesus Christ. If there is a hell, its fires wait for them, not us. You sound angry, Frank. Sure. Well, I am. And, uh, I resent encroachments on the First Amendment because I'm a constitutional fundamentalist. And these encroachments are taking place how? Well, they take place every day, but especially since the Reagan administration has taken power, I believe he must owe an awful lot to the group of video evangelists that he uh, does business with. Because they're talking about rock music and lyrics and what's on records and what kids are listening to. It's not just that, because the influence of fundamental fundamentalist theory, let's call it, in American politics is, I think, beyond the limit of what the government should tolerate in terms of church meddling. After all, these people pay no taxes. They're getting a free ride. The IRS can't look at their books. And you've got a president that owes them a lot because they use their television stations to help get him in. But they have a right of free speech, which of you course, would defend. I, I defend. And they have, have a right, right to say, I think Frank Zappa's lyrics are bad. Of course. Okay. But they well, do not have a right to pass legislation or influence legislation which influences my life or the lives of people who don't agree with their point of view just because they've got an inn in Washington, D.C. And they keep putting up the smoke screen about government meddling in religion but really it's religion meddling in government because of the economic influence there. Now, what is their goal, do you think? They want to ban albums? No, their goal is to take over the United States the same way the Ayatollah took over Iran. You believe that? I believe it. All right, in the, in the music area, what is their goal? Their goal, well, they're using the... Um, right now you have a cotton candy news story about censorship of rock lyrics. They want to rate rock albums, not country and western albums, that, because country and western music music is like God's music, so you don't touch that, but any rock and roll album that has uh, lyrics that describe explicit sex, body function, violence, what they call Satanism, all this, uh, they want to put labels on it. Like movie ratings? Like movie ratings, yes. That's kind of weird, because that didn't start with rock. It's the same as when people attack hip-hop now, or drill now, really. Um, but if you go back to country and folk and most of it's about robbing people, cowboys, um, sleeping with girls. Like it's it's that type of mu every music really has been about that. If you really listen, I mean, yeah, country music especially has got a lot of um, things of crazy relationship stories and and shooting your wife and uh, yeah so yeah it's kind of yeah i see what zappa's kind of it's uh, um this is okay but this is not is a let me decide that for myself 
so that the parent would say this has a B, don't buy this. Mm, it would, well, it's not like a B. If they have for drugs and alcohol, they have a D slash A. All right, then we all know the country and western songs are full of drugs and alcohol and divorce and, uh, you know. Uh, but it wouldn't affect country and western. How do you know that? If because I, I debated a woman named Candy Stroud on the CBS uh, Night Watch uh, the Sunday night debate, which will air next Sunday. And I asked her that question on the air. She said no. It would not be on Country and Western, only rock. That's right. And who would determine the rating? She, I don't know what the relationship is between Candy Stroud, Tipper Gore, and uh, Baker. I don't know whether they're friends, they're organized uh, together, but uh, just in what she told me from her point of view, she wanted the record companies to voluntarily comply with this list of demands. As the movie industry does. That's voluntary. That rating is no law. The movie industry puts a rating on movies. You don't have to submit a movie for it. Correct. But see, here's the problem with the voluntary submission. In submitting to pressure from a Christian organization, they have a right to their religion, they have a right to their point of view, but they do not have a right to control the world. Okay? I don't think anybody's got the right to do that. Now, that's what's up their sleeve. By submitting to the voluntary rating thing, you validate the when I watch these old videos of Frank Oz, it really, uh, again, you can go to the Bible. Literally, the Bible talks about it. I think every religious text talks about it. Um, what's the, I don't know the exact quote, but it's like, um, those who will last will be first. Those who will be downtrodden will be the treaded downers. <laughs> that's not a direct quote but um you know what i mean like and as you see now you have this we're having a problem this is right wing uh right wing um extremism basically but we have it now with the left like it's and and it just proves that time is a, a rapper, Akala, said it, time is a cycle, not a line. I mean, obviously, he's not the first to say it, but he said that. Um, and it's true that it just goes in cycles. And that we have a crazy extremist left thing, which is doing exactly what Frank Zappa said. If you want to have your beliefs and you want to think your way of thinking, think it. But don't tell me that I have to think it, and legis which we do have laws that legislate... Um, like hate crimes, which is a kind of ridiculous thing. Like it's people are literally in prison in our country for saying something or putting something online. Um, and it was the left. It was the left that managed to bring it through. And and like he's saying, hid behind this kind of whatever. Um, that's hid behind tolerance. But we're just being tolerant, but it's like, but you're not, because if I want to say that, you know, a man is a man is a, and a woman is a woman, I can literally get done for that. Someone said, I said um, about something I was reacting to, that the person on it was arguing like a woman, and someone commented saying, you'd get literally hung for saying that in America. You get hung for saying that here, but the fact is, is that um, men and women are different. It, it We're different. We have different ways of looking at things. We have different things we're good at, different things we're interested in, different, um, different every, in every pretty much aspect. Um, but if I was to say that, and it's hid behind some kind of tolerance, but it's like, but that's not being tolerant. That's a dictator. If you're telling me that I have to think your way, and the trouble is, like at this point, it, this would have only helped rock and roll because for all the people, all the people that want to ban things are never the cool people. No one looks at them and goes, oh, they're cool. And whatever you're trying to ban then gets forced underground and people who want to rebel against the status quo are going to pick whatever is going to a kind of trigger. Um the status quo and if you push something down to make it underground then it's only going to be so that in this day where they're trying to suppress rock and roll 
it's only going to drive more adolescent teens who are in that rebellion stage of life to rock and roll. And it's, it's kind of concerning at the minute with, like, the right. The right at this point is the the same people, but if the right and people are abandoning the left instead of staying left and sorting the left out, the left is a problem today. And it, and people from the left seem to think that it's just jump over to the right. But the trouble is if the right gets too much power, it's a real delicate balance. But yeah, it just because it's, it's the same with George Carlin. You watch George Carlin and... At this point in time where he's talking about conservative and right wing people, it doesn't hit the same because it's that's not our problem. It's not the it's not the right now. But then in fifty years time or a hundred years time, it will be the right again. Because all the people that are getting annoyed and kind of disillusioned by the left now are joining the right which will make the right get more power. And as the right gets more power, you get more right-wing things. At the minute, the right is kind of on the defense. But the minute that they're not, and they start getting more power, then you're going to start getting things like this again, censoring lyrics. And um, and then in a hundred years' time, it's kind of like... Yeah, anyway, sorry about that. Let's go point of view because their point of view is sex is sin. References to sex is sinful. Uh, children should not know how biology really works. Uh, the children should not know about certain sexual practices. Children should not hear this. Children should not hear that. Okay. I don't think that the record industry is correct because certain... But then in a way you can kind of see why the... And this is what I'm going to do a video on my political view and, and solving the political problem i just need to find a good way to word it but what he's saying here is like yeah maybe this is a bit of a um a quick jump to want to ban something but then if you see where society has gone on to where now you get kids you actually get people that say it's perfectly fine to take a kid to a drag show and that kids have drag shows at their school. It's like, it's, no, because you never had lessons about being straight and you learn about biology in sex education. But you don't need to, the sexual preference of your teacher isn't relevant. The sexual preference of you isn't relevant because you're not there for that. It's like going to a uh, um, butcher's getting a job at a butcher's but I don't know I can't think of a good analogy <laughs> but yeah let's go. Steps have already been taken by some people in the record industry to agree with part of their program I read that in Variety today mm. that uh, Gordikoff representing a number of labels has said we will rate um, put stickers on certain things and denied some of their other requests but you shouldn't cave in at all never bend over for a Christian you know, when somebody says, if you'll just do this for us, think of what the ramification is. That's the foot in the door. The snake oil salesman is going to come in there and tell you to move your furniture around. Don't you think, for example, the movie ratings are a good idea? With, would you want your 12-year-old to see blood, gore, and violence? And when you see an R and they don't let them in, isn't that pretty good thinking of an adult society for their children? Well, think about Without it. Without barring way. the picture from being shown. Okay, th think about it this way. Uh, in, we live in Los Angeles. There are many cable stations they can watch and the variety of types of things that you can see, including sometimes seven channels of religion in Los Angeles. So it's a very good variety of stuff, and they watch it all. Of course, they have their favorites. I have four children, and they all have different things they like to watch. I don't, you know what I tell them not to watch? Don't watch a television show with a phone number at the bottom of the screen. Or if you see a man in a brown suit smiling too much, that's always dangerous. You don't like <laughs> religious people very much. No, I do like religious people, but I say, if you think about what the Bible says, when Jesus got very angry when he found people doing business in the temple, and that's what you've got. Just because a man can afford his own television station and thinks that because if he calls his 
business, a religion. He will not be taxed. The IRS can't look at his books, and he can ex exert all this political influence and then use the money to buy more television equipment. You know, he becomes his own little government. Sim I don't like that. Similar to the past interview, Frank, forgetting the legalistics. Okay. The First Amendment is pretty clear. Yeah. We can't suppress language. Why would you, uh, for example, if I came out with a record that said, let's go out and kill cops, let's go out and rob banks, mm -hmm. you might say that's a pretty poor taste and uh, that's uh, purporting an illegal act and while I have a right to say it, mm -hmm. uh, you can question my ethical values in, in promoting a record, a rock record to kids telling them to rob banks. Mm -hmm. Why would you have a rock record that says, let's sniff coke? Well, I mean, why ethically would you do that? Well, let me explain to you one thing about the rock and roll business. See, I do not speak for the rock and roll industry. I, I'm not asking you. Okay, oh, and I wouldn't, and they wouldn't want me to because I don't agree with their practices. Basically, the rock and roll industry is a business that sells whatever product they can sell, and it's the law of supply and demand. If somebody wants to hear a record that says, let's go sniff cocaine, they're going to buy it because they are sniffing cocaine. The How do record, you feel about that? Though? I don't like it. I'm not concerned. Assuming it, you know, this, I think that it's it's not for me. But I there's a like if you listen to Fifty Cent on his first album, he's he obviously his big one was in in the club, which I think has just passed a billion streams. But it's go surely, it's your birthday. Every day is someone's birthday, so every day that song can be played. That's exactly why Fifty Cent made that song. He has a song on that album as well which is a great song called High All The Time about smoking weed. And 50 Cent will tell you he's never smoked weed in his life. But the reason he made High All The Time on that album was because um, to catch the college audience. Every college kid who's smoking weed, every teenager who's smoking weed, everybody who's smoking weed hears that song and just instantly likes it because it's a bell smoking weed so yeah frank zappa's got a point it is it necessarily nala out out um yeah zappa has a point is it a case the the it's the chicken or the egg thing is is the rock and roll record making people take coke or is the fact that the rock and roll song mentions coke the reason why people like the song because they're coke i mean coke I'm not so much in our country now, ketamine has taken over, but Coke's still are high up there as one of the most popular drugs in the world. It's just, this is what it is. And especially around like the 80s is when Coke become like a more working class drug. Up until that point, it weren't. But it's, yeah, like it's the same with Oasis. Oasis talked about sniffing Coke in their songs, but it's, but the other thing is, it's what they were doing. It's kind of, yeah. I don't think a songwriter sits down and thinks, oh, I'm going to infect kids with this kind of... It is just that that's what their life is. It's the same as you take these drill rappers where all they talk about is hood shit. Because it's all they know. They've never been out of their area. Everything that is important to them is in that area. Everything they know, they've learned from being in the street. It's kind of what makes the music so great. Now, you can say, yeah, to a certain extent, that... Um, makes impressionable young people want to do it but that you're always going to get that you're always going to have people copy and it's like why are we bowing down to these morons that do do that anyway that's good. wouldn't deny somebody else the right to hear it they, I don't think of it as music. An adult society has to do with regard to children? Sure, they should protect the welfare of the children. And one of the things that you do for a child is prepare that child for the real world. Not a lot. The type of information it needs in order to deal with the real world. Get so down. when they hear Let's Sniff Coke, they don't go out and sniff That's it. That's right. Because they've been prepared right, not because the record right. told them to do it. Right. Yeah, and another thing with that is, is don't let... Don't let rock musicians or rappers or actors or be who's raising your kid teach your kid but then again it doesn't matter because it really depends on the area as well that you live in i remember seeing Noel gallagher say a quote where someone said to him in an interview uh oasis experimented with drugs and he's like 
Noel goes, no, the middle class experiments with drugs. The working class just gets stuck in. It's just what everyone does. And it that's the truth of it. If you could censor every rock song and make them all Christian rock, but then at the end of the day, they're going to go out and Bill at their school, who's super cool, is going to do all this nicking cars and shit, and everyone wants to be around that kid. Girls want to, like young girls, like the, not even just young girls, girls, women, like a bad boy type. Is it women's fault then that men get coke? Because most of the, was it if, um, little big girl says, some brothers would still be virgins if crack never came out. I know loads of boys like that. Loads of boys that have ridiculously hot girls, but they get them because they sell coke. And then coke will make a cokehead girl drop her panties quicker than anything. So do you ban girls? <laughs> I mean, where do you draw the line? It's crazy. But yeah. Yeah, I have a problem. I don't have a problem with the Bible. I don't have a problem with any religious person, but organizations, I don't understand how a religion based off of Jesus Christ's life has a really old bloke who literally sits on a throne of gold and has a, basically a crown. And, and is there any point that Jesus said, give some money? from his followers right i don't i don't understand that I, I, the money thing loses me like organized religion is just like anything else it's just corrupt but i do think that the bible and things are are very good um because basically this is what jordan peterson says uh how do you teach a kid morals if not through stories because if you say don't kill, well, why? What's your reasoning to say why that's bad? And in, and in certain areas, it's not. In certain areas, that's praised. In certain countries, in certain time periods, the morals of our country come from Christianity because not every civilization had our morals. So that to a certain point that the initial beginning of our morals, it has to come from myths and stories and... um. Yeah, and I think the Bible is kind of a best of of these kind of ancient stories that are that are timeless. Like, no matter where you put the stories of the Bible, you can translate them into, um, like Sodom and Gomorrah in it, where God basically says to one man and his wife who are living faithfully, "Nala, no, I'm doing videos." Go on then, go on then. But yeah, um, yeah, uh, what was I saying? Sodom and Gomorrah. But you take the Sodom and Gomorrah, where God basically said to one man and his wife who wasn't doing naughty things, listen, you need to get out of town. Um, get out of town and don't look back. And he takes his wife, bounces with his wife, walking off. She looks back, sees the town on fire, the city on fire. She turns into stone instantly. And you can take that as a metaphor for, like, in your life. Don't dwell on the past. Because if you dwell on the past, you will turn to stone. In a metaphorical sense, if, if, if you're so focused on the past you you basically become a rock you become a statue of yourself in the past basically you're never going to progress further so you can take stories like that as that Moses part in the Red Sea is someone trying to break away from the nine to five thing of slavery in the nine to five world to start a business and if you're going to do that anybody who started a business will say for the first uh, when the Moses uh, when Moses and the slaves were in the it wasn't just great the day after. They had a long time of shit before it turned out good for them. Um, but yeah. 
you can take that to be the business like if you want to go solo if you want to be a musician say and you you have to do the nine to five well because that's you have to live so you're kind of stuck to that but to break away from through that it's a difficult thing to do and not everybody can do it and it is part in the red seas doing the impossible um so there is the bible has timeless stories in it but i don't agree with the organized thing and again i don't agree with um don't tell me what's have you like he said have your point of view but don't force your view onto me i don't care what you think i don't care what you want to do in any aspect of anything i don't care but don't come to me and tell me that i have to swallow your bullshit and and yeah but these frank zappa things are always good when he sits down like i feel like he'd be an interesting person to talk to because like, there's some things i disagree with frank zappa on as well and i'm the type of person that went like that's the who i like to talk to much is people that disagree with me or i disagree with them because it's what can you learn from someone who thinks exactly the same as you do and when you talk to people that don't that you don't agree with either like you can teach them something and maybe change their thing but vice versa too you can learn something and maybe not necessarily change your whole view but kind of go ah, i see what you're saying with that like patrice a lot of things that patrice says i don't agree with but his reasoning for it and his explanation for it i can appreciate but whether I agree with it or not, but hearing him explain something, you go, oh, I, I, I understand. Um, yeah, but yeah. Anyway, that's the reaction. Sweet.